I'm here with Dom Reed Deshays, MS advocate, author, poet, executive producer of multiple sclerosis films. Like, she got it all going on. And we are going to talk about not letting MS define you, okay? Because it can be hard, but we're going to talk about what that means right now. So you're an advocate, you're an author, you got three books out, you got a movie coming out that you're executive producing about multiple sclerosis, but somehow you don't let it define you. What? What is that about? It's about getting up in the sunrise of the morning and keep on moving whether the disease is stopping me or not. And mm. the point of looking in the mirror and saying, we're going to have a fabulous day. I may feel like shit. I'm going to look fabulous and I'm going to keep going. Wow. There, there's something in the fe feeling like poop, but knowing that you're great and you're fabulous and you keep going. Like, how do you reconcile that in your own brain? Because I, I know that you've dealt with a lot of stuff. You're like walking and talking and all these very, very essential, serious things that MS has really uh, messed with you with. And you're like, no, I'm not gonna let that define me. I can't talk so good today, so I'm gonna do something else. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And um, sometimes you don't need the voice to tell the story. You need to be able to write what the story is. You need to wow. be able to present what the story is without speaking, mm. which is a photograph, a movie, mm. a directing, it, it, a playwright. It, what I'm even that kind is what our life is living with multiple sclerosis. We are all of those things. What I'm hearing is that in one way, whatever's taken away is taken away, but whatever remains is what you decide remains. So if I'm not walking so good today or if I'm not talking so good today, then I'm going to write. If I'm not running around here so good today, then I'm just going to sit and work from here. If I can't see so good today, well, I'm not going to drive. I'm going to do something else. There's something about that, about the dynamism of do, making another choice instead of letting the thing that is quite rightly weighing you down, weigh exactly. you down. Exactly. And that's what you and I both do. Mm. We don't accept what the body and the brain of the, the myelin sheaf and our white Immune, or excuse me, there goes an MS moment. <laughs> the, um, the white blood cells going into our brain and eating the myelin sheath, mm. which is a continuing th factor of just creating these large holes within our brains that stop us from being able to do all these things. It does not mean it has to stop you in life. It just means you need to take a look at where you are and where am I going to do next in this moment and handle the attacks, handle the multiple sclerosis flares, and then acknowledging them and then realizing I now need to retrain my brain to stop doing what it's doing and focus on the other parts of my body. Hmm. Easy to say, hard to do. Okay, so that's why we're talking about this. Like, how, how do you do that? I know everyone is different, but it, it, it's easy to say these things. It's way harder to do these things. So you do. I do a lot of um, music therapy, a lot of laying down therapy when I'm having an attack um, with a heavy weighted blanket. And uh. I on the positive things in my life and I think about the positive things mm. versus the pain. Now granted there have been days that the pain is so severe that I'm like what the F <laughs> I'm done with you. I'm done. And I am not going to allow you to do this. So then I analyzed what brought this on. Was it mm. no sleep? Was it bad food? Did I go out? Was it negative people around me? 
So what happened in those two days prior to leading up to this massive attack mm -hmm. that has now got me completely paralyzed and I can barely do anything but lay in bed. It, it seems like there's some sort of um, uh, outward uh, view of oneself because when one has the condition, they can only look at themselves from inside and I get it. And if there's something about learning how to look at yourself on the outside and then still doing different even though it's difficult even though it's hard even though it's, it's something is not right with it you do it anyway exactly because you can stay home and be miserable you mm. can stay home and say I, my legs are exhausted i can't do this mm. or i can't see well today i can't do this and you decline on many many things in your life and I have been there and I have done that. Same. And I have had suicide thoughts and I have attempted suicide because of the disease. But the last attempt that I had was my saving grace. Mm. And that attempt really ma made me realize, go ahead, keep throwing it at me because mm. I'm not supposed to be gone. I'm here for a reason, a time and a season. And my life has been played out for those reasons. The tragic, the trauma, mm -hmm. the, dis the depression, the anxiety, the, the frustration, the yeah. pissed offness, the why me? You know what? That doesn't work. It does not work. It is, I was born into this body. These diseases attacked me. This is what my life is. Mm. Stop. Mm. Where am I going next? How do I change the thought process of the world and myself? There seems to be an element of um, continuing your own way, not even in spite of what's going on, but because of what's going on and including what's going on. And we're not taking away that we can't really see that well. We can't, we're not taking away that we not walk, we didn't walk uh, that, that well or like, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but there's some ele element of taking these, these disparate elements and not making them define you in a bad way, but having them define you in a more uplifting way. Um, and support and supporting that and that helps bring other people into what you are doing like talk about that more yeah you know it's so true i mean anyone in the world from the time that man began to where we are today in the year of 2021 there will always be tragedy we have lived with tragedy us living with multiple sclerosis is a tragedy with over 3.9 million people in the world living with this disease that people do not understand. So taking that and sitting down and helping them understand what the disease is, mm. is helping you heal. Mm. Wow. When you allow yourself to open up to a complete stranger about the disease, you have now given yourself power over that disease. When we are ashamed of the disease and we want to sit in a hole and be in a dark room and play, I can't do this, that my life is miserable. Guess what? The disease is going to continue to take your life away. Yeah. Every second, minute, hour, mm. moment, month, year, mm. that you allow it to do that. Yeah. When we focus on the positive and the light and the beauty around us and how amazing we are, mm. we are the ultimate warriors of the world living with multiple sclerosis. So as I, how does even someone do this? I know it's like individual and everyone has their own way, 
but I, we can sit here and be like, oh yeah, we had this horrible, you know, set of disease and we couldn't do this and we couldn't do that. And now we can, and now, yeah. But someone who's more in the like, I can't do this, I can't do this, or I used to be able to do this, or I can't do this anymore. How does one go from like that sort of a place to um, a place that's more supportive of shining the light instead of uh, dimming the light? Like, I know I have my way, you have your way. Like, what would you say to someone who's just listening, maybe? Um, I would just say, listen, life is going to deal you a bunch of cards that you may or may not like, mm. but you need to look in the mirror and realize you are you, you are the best you in the world, whether you're dealing with any kind of trauma or tragedy or self trauma mm. or self doubt, you need to realize you were born for a reason and this disease needs awareness. So instead of having the self-pity and the I can't, and I, I feel horrible, tell the world how you feel, but then start to learn how to tell it in the positive light of what this disease does. Because when you live in the light, the darkness has a hard time finding you. Wow, there's there's an element to this whole thing of not letting your disease define you as sort of in, in one in one head, it's like, don't let the disease, you know, take away all the things that you've ever known or whatever, whatever. But there's also the element of like, don't just talk about MS 27, 24 seven to everybody that you meet and everybody that you see. Because like as much as the disease is giving you purpose in the world, it's defining you socially in the way that could be to your detriment in some way. Like, does that resonate, resonate with you, what I, what I just said? Absolutely. When I first, prior to being diagnosed, after 20 years of not being diagnosed, it was a detriment to my life. It was mm. a torment. It was a phantom. I thought of suicide every single day of my life. I didn't understand what was wrong with me. I thought evil, evil demons mm. were destroying me and haunting me Seems because like I couldn't prove it. I could only feel it. And everyone around me was like, ah, there's nothing wrong with you. Yeah, well, I, yeah there is. Wow. And that is a major thing that we have to bring awareness to, to the world. And I thought, great. We have all of these societies and they're amazing for what they do, but who's really going to get down and dirty and tell the real truth. Mm. Mm. So then I took it in my own hands and I wrote my heart and soul out of what that disease did to me. Yeah. Mm. And I say that disease because I don't mm. acknowledge her anymore. Yeah. 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 Part of me. It's a part of me but it will not control me. It will try to, it will make me trip. It will make me have pain. It will have, make me have memory loss. Mm. It will make me get upset. Mm. It will overheat me. It will stop me from doing certain things, but guess what? I'm going to get back up and show you, you're not controlling my brain anymore. I, I think that's this, what it would part, part of what it is. It's that you don't do these things, you don't shine your light in, 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 over all the you know darkness that's in you. You shine your light in spite of it. And you don't flinch, you don't move. And you're looking at square in the eye, you're like, I cannot walk from here to the refrigerator without pain. I cannot walk around the block without getting um, noodle legs. That's not gonna stop me from going outside. Right. That's not gonna stop me from maybe going halfway and then just sitting. And then when I'm feeling composed enough to go to the next thing, go and go for actually finishing the task. You know, the, the brain uh, and your heart and your soul begins to think of ways that you can do more, the more you think about how much more you can do instead of thinking about 
what you can no longer do. And it, exactly. the, the only way to do that is to actually do it. No one can tell you uh, what, what that is and how that feels in you, except right, you. for you. Listen, we, we are all here and we're all the ones that think and breathe and dream. Mm. Mm. No one can take that away from you. Nobody. So why are you not shining your light and bringing awareness to what is going on in your life? No one can take that from you, especially you. That, that's something that's um, like, I'm emotional here, just but again, because this is the... I liken the MS thing to, to being in the club. Like we're in the club, but we, it took a huge price to get in the club. We, we it, it, it costs a lot. Okay. You know, it, it, don't nobody actually want to, to be in here, you know, but you're in here. And all of the people that are in the that are in here, not all of them, but most of them are some of the most genuine some of the most uh, loving and giving uh, uh, people that, that you're going to find in this world. Uh, so that sort of helps temper me when my knees suck or like, you know what? I haven't gone to the bathroom like a regular person in three days. You know what I'm saying? Like all right. of that. Okay. But okay. <laughs> that's, so come on. After this interview, I got to give you my magic that I just found. Well, and you'll go into the bathroom every single day. Okay, yeah. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> but but yeah, people, this is real. We're not joking. No, no, MS it shuts us down. Where we cannot go to the bathroom for three days, sometimes a week. Do you know how flipping painful that is? The the idea of having to be in this sort of thing, but still not letting it de define you in a way that you would not be if you did not have this thing. I, th I think I think I think you and I are the type of people that would be doing these sorts of things anyway. And exactly. so we, we do these sorts of things in this context. But um, because of that, we're, we're not we, it, it doesn't stop us from doing what we will be doing anyway and that's what people have to find within themselves for themselves yeah right it, it's all about finding you loving mm. you acknowledging mm. you whether you are were born with autoimmune or you were born with something else or you were born perfect mm. but you may not feel that way you have to accept yourself for who you are Wow. And yes, there's therapists and I've seen many mm. and yes, there's doctors and I have had thousands mm. and yes, mm. there is, you know, a pill you can take, mm. but the one thing you have to remember in life is you have to love yourself with the good and the bad mm. and you have to acknowledge both. And once you acknowledge that bad and that evil and that phantom, and you give it a name and you realize you're not going to control me. Wow. wow. I am going to control me and I will learn everything there is in the world to help myself build and learn and bring awareness, not only to myself, but to the world for free because we out here now it's, we're out here there's an element of there's so many you know different things that could go right could go wrong like i didn't hit the record button at the beginning of this interview folks so Dalry, this is the second time me and Dalry are doing this and it's totally different than what it was my point is as much as that little thing um it messed up what the heck I had going on and what I was trying to do. I didn't let it define me. I didn't let it define the rest of my day and the energy and the spirit of this interview, bringing this here for you and sharing this space with my friend, 
No, it's just like, fine, that's what happened. Let's do it. Let's do something else now. We will do something else now. Exactly. And that's we living with and, and we just laughed. <laughs> what are you gonna do? We can do, we can do living with are you MS. Cry? Are you gonna okay. be, are you gonna be a child at two years old and have a, a, a meltdown and a fit? No. Nah. Because those are gonna create more problems in your life. Hundred percent. Laugh at it. Take it for 100%. what it is and love it and move forward. Look, I appreciate you and your energy and these sentiments um, and your focus and your time and again your energy uh, to to present that that notion to the, to this to this audience. Thank you, um, thank you for showing up to operate. Um, right. and, I am always here for you. Yes. And, and thank you guys for tuning in and thank you. And we'll see you on another MS Views Now.